All right, here we go. Tomorrow you have a test, 25 questions, multiple choice. You have six primaries tomorrow. So according to Bobby, you don't have to study because there's so many primaries. I would not go along with that plan of action. I would study for tomorrow's test. It is definitely one of my traditional, one of the hardest ones, but I am trying to be genuinely kind today, so please make sure you are listening as we go through. On your whiteboard, please tell me, what region does gunpowder come from? Oh my god, look at you! Wow, you guys are so smart. So, so smart. <laughs> Rod, where do they come from? East Asia. East Asia. On your whiteboard, please tell me, what is the name of the capital city of Japan? I want the traditional name and its modern day. Good. What is it, Devin? Edu and Tokyo. Edu and Tokyo. On your whiteboard, Edu or Tokyo are going to be the cultural center of Japan. The most important part of their vibrant art uh, is what type of theater? Uh, what is it, Sophia? Kabuki. Kabuki. On your whiteboard. Um, the Ming and the Qing believe that their emperor is divine. What do they call it? Good. William. So on your whiteboard, please tell me um, what Japanese empire overthrows the Heian and then makes the Daimo and the Samurai less important and puts them in poverty. Autumn. Tokugawa. Tokugawa. On your whiteboard, please tell me what two Chinese dynasties make women even less valuable and make patriarchy even more important with two Chinese dynasties. Good. Javi. Jing and the Ming. On your whiteboard, please tell me what two Chinese dynasties are anti-technology. They'd rather focus on social and political stuff. Good. Jake. Wing and the, Ming and the Ching. On your whiteboard, what was the most important Chinese expert uh, American export to China. They loved it. It will debase their entire economy because they cannot get enough of it. No, not peanuts. <laughs> Doesn't ruin their economy. What is it, Colton? Silver. Silver. Uh, On your whiteboard. Please tell me, what is the name of the gentleman who is trying to increase the prestige of China by sailing in the Indian Ocean Basin, around Africa, and sailing all the way to Europe, and he collects little knickknacks. Who is it? Blake. Zhang He. On your whiteboard, please tell me what is. What two dynasties do the Ming emulate in recreating Chinese culture? What two Chinese dynasties, previous dynasties, do the main copy trying to uh, revitalize their culture? Sophia. Song of the Tang. Song of the Tang. Guys, it can't be the Yan because the Yan dynasty is who? Mongols. And who do the main hate more than anything? Mongols. Mongols. So it can't be Mongols. All right, here we go. Who can raise your hand? Let me know where we left off. Fulton. Uh, we got started on the Ottoman Empire. The what? Oh, hell yes. Okay, so going back to Japan, I want to make a little bit of notes. If I'm making notes, is there a reason why I'm doing it? Yeah. So I do want you to add in your Japanese notes, Sakao, which is right over here on my board. Sakao is Japanese. It means closing the ports to Europeans. So Sakao is the closing of ports to Europeans. I include that in your Japanese notes, please. Ooh. Three. All right, here we go. So yesterday we did get to the Ottomans. Perfect. So we have on your, you know that the Ottoman, the Safed, and the Mughal are your three gunpowder empires, correct? We are familiar that the Ottomans are going to create the service of Devishmir, whatever that is. You need to write that down. It is the forcing of Christian boys to fight for the Ottoman military. Okay, do we have that? Yes. Okay, 
It is going to increase the prestige of all Christians. Perfect. You need to know that anyone who fights for the Ottomans are called Janissaries. They are typically your top tier and it's forced uh, military service. So Janissaries, uh, Janissaries are your top tier. They are forced into the military for service. Okay, cool. This is awesome. All right, Mahed the second. Ladies and gentlemen, we've been talking about this since all of period four. We're finally going to do it. In 1453, Mahed II conquers Constantinople. We've been talking about it since forever. Now we finally conquered it. Now, this is important because Constantinople was a Christian city. Now it's a Muslim, Muslim city. And this is the last Christian city to fall. Today in 2018, is there a Muslim? Is there a Christian city in the Middle East? No, there is not. They're all Muslim because Constantinople in 1453 was the last one to fall, so it is significant. Oh, and he renames it Istanbul. You should know that. All right, you need to know the Suleiman the Magnificent. By the way, you can call me Miss Bennett the Magnificent anytime you like. I think it'll be pretty awesome. Um, is going to conquer all the way to Austria. Guys, that's really impressive. The reason why I really want you to know that is because why could Suleiman the Magnificent make it all the way to Austria? What do they have that the Europeans don't? They have what, Bobby? They have gunpowder because they're called the what, Bobby? They're called the gunpowder empires. Yes, hello. Okay, they have gunpowder, uh, Europeans do not have gunpowder, okay? That's why. How do Europeans get gunpowder? From the Ottoman Empire, yes. They get it, the technology from them and the conquering and they come in contact with it, they figure it out. That's how the Europeans get it, is from the Ottoman Empire, yes? The first person to get gunpowder is the Mughal, the second is the Safad, then the third is going to be your Ottomans. Yes, does that make sense logically? Because gunpowder comes from what region? East Asia. Look at you. Alright, so, there you go, I hope you enjoyed the Ottomans. The Safed Empire, I would write next to it Middle East, so you're familiar with it. Now out of the three empires, which one's the biggest? Ottoman is your biggest, so keep that in mind. So, the Safed Empire, you need to know that they're going to create a new sect of Islam called the Twelver Shism. Shism. Okay, they're going to create a new sect of Islam called the Twelver Shism. They believe that there are 11 Imams. 11 Imams are essentially what we would call Christians as prophets, uh, or people who have great insight into Allah and Muhammad. They are waiting for the twelfth one to complete the story. Okay? They believe that there is another Imam waiting to present themselves. Okay? So, the Twelver Shism, they believe that there are eleven Imams and they're waiting for the twelfth. How many of you have ever seen Aladdin? Aladdin is a Twelver. He wears a little red hat. Oh, that's a Twelver. There he goes. He's waiting for the final Imam. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> you can't just wear one. But they look cool. No, it's like putting on a yarmulke if you're not Jewish. That's yeah. wrong. Let him wear it. No. Let him get bullied. No, it's like, no. It's like I can't wear a uh, hair color covering if I'm not a Muslim woman. You know what I mean? A hijab, that's what I was trying to get to. You know, it's just kind of disrespectful. All right. Okay, you do need to know that the Ottomans and the Safid are going to fight, and the Ottomans win. That's all you really need to know about it. The Ottomans win, the Safid are going to be weakened. So the Ottomans and the Safid fight, and the Ottomans win. They are going to be weakened. And then a guy named Shah Abbas the Great is going to uh, try to rebuild the Safid.
Okay, so you need to know the Ottoman and the Safid fight, the weekends, the Safid, and then a guy named Shah Abbas the Great is going to rebuild the Safid military. We got that. And that's it for the Safid, and we're going to the Mughal. Yes! But oh, we're not excited about it. I am like cruising right through this for you, and I'm handpicking what I'm telling you, so you're welcome. Thank you. Thank It's two days a week, man. Does it really hurt you that bad? No, it was just yesterday on the plant lectures. It was like 15 minutes of it. we already had the stuff, so I was like. No, like. Because they're ahead. You guys are a little. No, you weren't. You were. No, you were. No, you were. Said you were. I, 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 was, I was just listening for 15 minutes of review. Is that a good thing? Yeah, it's, it's a great smart. thing. It's just like... Then why are you fussing about it? <laughs> Jake, everyone who knows, you know you fuss. <laughs> Here we go. Mughal! All right, next to him there in India. Oh, is this the one that went to the south? <laughs> it went to the south? What does that well, mean? Like the <laughs> yeah. yeah. They don't conquer all of it, no. No. All right. Yes. Okay, go. the Taj Mahal. Yeah. Yes. Are you an AP art history? Nope. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so know. proud of that. I wouldn't do that to myself. Why? Do you think I know what a, what, what is it called, the, the 12, the six boxes? What the hell are you yeah. talking about? It's called a, a snapshot. Do you think I'm going to do that every day? Yeah. Yeah. That is the yeah. easiest thing. Yeah. 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 Once a week. Yeah. Yeah. My whole lunch table, all they do is study and fuss about the class. Good place to know. Here we go. You need to know that Zaheer al-Din Muhammad, also known as Babar the Tiger, is going to be the founder of the Mughal dynasty, and he is going to invade from the north and take over northern India. Now, it is important that you know that they are not Mongols. Ren tells you that they're Mongols. He's fake news. They are not Mongols. However, they take on the name Mongols. Why? Because... People who hear Mongols, if I told you there was a horde of Mongols coming at you, what are you going to feel? Yeah. Terrified. So instead of having to be like, hi, I'm Steve, and be like, ooh, Steve, and then you're going like, to scare them. If they tell you they're Mongols, you're going to be like, oh, my God, right? I guess Steve is a weird example. It's fine. So he has gunpowder. Obviously, all of these gunpowder empires do. So he takes over the territory pretty quickly. Akbar is a big deal. Put a big star next to him because he's pretty awesome. Akbar is going to be the grandson of Babar. Fun fact, he threw a guy out the window, went down the tower, got the guy, dragged him back upstairs, and threw him out of the tower window a second time. <laughs> That's amazing. Can you imagine being that petty? Like, that is amazing. Who records this I don't know, but I'm grateful they have it. Doesn't it make it way more interesting than telling, yes. like... That's why I like including all the weird pieces that I do. It just makes it a little bit more, like... <laughs> these people are real humans. They're complicated. It's not just some, like, random dude. And it's way more interesting. Like, do you really care that he's religiously tolerant? Yeah. You should care, because historically it's important. But, like, if I tell you that, you're going to listen to this a little bit more, which is why I tell you that. So, you do need to know he's religiously tolerant, because that's a question on your test tomorrow. Akbar is incredibly religiously tolerant. Remember, he's in India, so what two religions are going at it? No, you are wrong. It's India. And Islam and Hinduism are going at it. Yes. Huh? Buddhism gets kicked out of India in period three. Because it's the child of the cast? Yes. So... You need to know that he creates a centralized government for the Mughal. The Safid and the Ottomans are decentralized. The Mughal is the only centralized. You also need to know that the Mughal dynasty is known as the Renaissance of South Asia. Under him, he creates... Now, he doesn't build all this stuff, but he starts this whole art thing. Uh, the Mughal dynasty is known for their art and architecture. As we know, the biggest piece is the Taj Mahal, of course, which is stunning and beautiful. If you haven't seen it, shame on you. Um, but they're known for their art. 
He is also a fan. He also supports a brand new religion. You're going to write new religion, and it's not a sect, called Sikhism. S-I-K. Put them together. I misspelled it, which is why there's space. S-I-K-H-I-S-M. Sikhism, which is a blend of Islam and Hinduism. Why do you think a leader of India would be such a fan of Sikhism, Johnny? So he can stop the infection. Oh, I thought that was my air coming on. It wasn't. It was someone rolling something outside. Oh my god, I got so excited. <laughs> oh my god, now I'm like so disappointed. Sorry. Did you hear it? I like, it's like, oh. Everything sucks. What, Johnny? I'm ignoring everything you said. What? Just stop the fighting. Yeah, to stop the fighting between the two religions, he thought it would be coming. Now, Sikhism becomes the third or fourth largest religion in the world. Uh, there are a couple of Sikhs who live in Tampa. Um, they, the men wear a head covering, and it it's a turban. If you've ever seen a turban, that is Sikhism. What do you got? Um, were there any Sikhs in the Ottoman Empire? No. Okay, no, and, and what was, the, what was this, the Renaissance? The Renaissance of uh, art and culture. So, in where? In Mughal. So we have Akbar, he's pretty cool. And then we have the next guy, you do need to know him. It's this guy, I don't know how to say. He is the anti-Akbar. <laughs> he hates Hindus and he punishes them. He destroys Hindu temples and he also jacks up the taxes against them to put them all in poverty. He hates Hindus? Yes, he hates them. What's his relationship to Akbar? His son or nephew or something like that. He's like, whether you love Trump, hate Trump, we can all agree, Trump is doing everything he can to eradicate Obama. Can we agree? Mm -hmm. Everything Obama has done, Trump's like, yeah, we're not doing that anymore. Right? This is the Trump of Akbar. Doing everything, unraveling everything Akbar did. All right. Now your heading is going to be all three gunpowder empires. There's a lot of similarities between all three. Okay? First thing you need to write, they're all Islamic. Oh, oh, um, you're going to want to write this down. You need to know that the Mughal is the only one to use Sharia law throughout all of it. The Mughal is the only one to use Sharia law. Who's going to raise your hand and tell me what Sharia law is? What is it, Kylie? It's Muhammad's uh, law. There you go. And he created it in what city? In Al-Rabina. There you go. After he got kicked out of? Perfect. Okay. In his Ummah, he created it. Perfect. Okay, so you need to know that all three gunpowder empires are Islamic. You need to know that the Mughal is the only one with Sharia law. You need to know that all empires are based on military conquest. They're only as powerful as how much land they conquer. Who's the biggest? Ottomans. Ottomans are your biggest. Okay. Um, the uh, You're going to write down the leaders are... In quotes, absolute. Why is absolute in quotes? Because they're not really absolute, but it's the easiest way to convey that they have all power. Why are they not absolute? Well, where do absolute rulers live? Whoa, 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 whoa. And we don't call Chinese emperors absolute. Where do we call people absolute rulers? In Europe. And what religion is it? Christianity. They believe because God appointed them to rule that they can do whatever the hell they want and who is to challenge their authority, correct? So we can't call these leaders absolute rulers because they didn't get their power from a Christian God. Can we agree? But in a sense, when we talk about absolutism, they are absolute rulers, whatever they say goes. Okay? So keep that in mind. Um, you shouldn't have to write this down. No one should be surprised. Women have absolutely no rights. Um, oh! No American crops make a big impact. No population is going to increase. It's the only place in the world where American crops were not really improving anyone's life. However, they do love coffee and tobacco. And you're going to write that down. The, uh, the Middle East today is the largest importer of coffee and, uh, and uh, cigarettes in the world. If you've ever met someone who actually lives in the Middle East, all they do is drink coffee and smoke cigarettes. I know a bunch of 
Uh, there's a bunch of people in the building right next to us, and I happen to know a bunch. So all UT has a huge Middle Eastern population. Did you know that? Mm -hmm. They have a huge Middle Eastern population, and they all live in downtown Tampa. And one, a bunch of them live next to us, and they're really nice kids. But all they did was sit on the balcony and drink coffee and smoke all the time. Anytime like you'd wake up at a weird hour, you would see the cigarettes just burning outside. It was the weirdest thing. Um, but yeah, today in 2018 is still very much so true. They are the largest consumers of coffee in the world. Does anyone know why? Johnny? You gotta stay awake. <laughs> why do they have to stay awake, Johnny, in comparison to you and I? They are not allowed to have alcohol in the Middle East. Yeah, if you, as Americans, if we go to like a really fancy hotel in the Middle East, they'll serve us alcohol. Why? Because it's our culture, it's our customs, we drink alcohol and we go places. Um, however, in the Middle East, they do not sell alcohol. So what's the only escape you have from your mundane lives? Coffee. Can you imagine? Like, getting drunk when you're 21 for the first time, you'll see that it's not that exciting. But could you imagine shaking through your day with all that caffeine? It would be terrible. And someone was like, well, that's so disgusting, they smoke cigarettes. You people in your damn jewels, do you really think you're that cooler? Like, come on. If you were going to judge these people for smoking cigarettes, well, you all have these electronic, like, vape pens in your bag, like, please, you are not better. Different chemicals, maybe? I have no idea. You people are strange. Uh, huh? Thank you. Thank you. Okay, you need to know that uh, they have taxes. All three have a tax called Ajisa on non-Muslims. So we've talked about this before, haven't we? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so but it is on your test tomorrow, so please make sure you know. All of them have a tax on non-Muslims called Ajisa, and if you don't pay, I don't know what happens to you. Now, the millet system is only in the Ottoman Empire. It's their decentralized government. If you want to write it in the Ottoman Empire section or just write Ottoman only, I don't care. Okay. And then, uh, so a couple of things you need to know. Ashvan, which is right here, you need to know, is known, its nickname is Half the World. Ashvan is the capital of the Safid. Ashvan is the name of the city. It has the nickname of half the world because of how diverse the population is. That was the capital of what? Ah, uh, the Sfid Empire. Ashvan. Okay, you need to know that it has a nickname of half the world uh, because of how diverse it was. You need to know that uh, the Taj Mahal is built by Shah Jahan. Isn't it Bruce White? Yeah, he's dead white. It's pretty cool. What? Um, when Akbar is ruling the Mughal and he like makes Sikhism, mm -hmm. is he doesn't make it, but he supports it. He supports Sikhism. Is there still a tax on Muslims? He abolishes all Jisa. He's so like, he just like loves everyone. Okay. Except for the guy who threw down twice. What? How do you spell the name of the guy? Shah Jahan. Amor. Who are the other people? They're not like, just people that are talking about. He was yeah. a patron. Or another dude who was like the other Jahan girl. Wait, Shah Jahan is the one girl. Shah Jahan, he builds the Taj Mahal. Thank you. Um, that's the only reason I know. In the beginning of the movie, like that whole scene where it's not Jahan. I've never seen the newest one. Jahan is Indian, and then Bahan is a fictional character in this one. Are you arguing about AP Art History stuff? Not arguing. Which one to decide who is the car and who is talking to the super shake? Oh no, Jahan or Tuck's super shake, Bahan or Tuck's Exactly. Yeah. Bar, but the big difference is Barham Gur is a fictional I'm so character. uncomfortable. That's why I don't like this. <laughs> <laughs> what don't you like? APR. Are you in it? Yeah. Do you hate it? Yeah. Some kids I have just hate it. They're just miserable with it. Apparently we got a little section. Amazing. 
I want that clothes. So. There you go. See, some people love it. Yeah. Some people hate it. Just random. Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's your I think, like, every aspect of that class is, like, my favorite. <laughs> wow. Why? It's just, you just like, like the team aspect of it? No, no, no. Like the way, no, no. like the way he teaches, the way the he hates my test so much. There was no way I was going to win that title. Go ahead. Like the way everything, you know, his teaching style, organization, testing, everything. It's just great. He's not that organized. Well, he has structure to his class. Yeah. In this class, we literally did like it's so structured. structured. I'd say APR is like a step or two down from that, but it still has it in there. You're welcome. <laughs> Are we done? This yeah, is the best box. Oh, no, you're fine. Fine. Everything else, I just was so much. This is the best box. Thank you. It's structured. I know what I'm doing. I know what I'm doing. Sometimes Mr. Red just like mixes it up a little bit. Huh? Mr. Red will mix it up. He'll be like, do you guys have a quiz on this? And then turns out you don't. And then he'll like... Here we go on your whiteboard. Please tell me what is... Uh, who's the guy who builds Taj Mahal? You really love that crap. You really do, William. You love it, man. That's awesome. Have you ever been to the Taj Mahal? No. I've never been to India. I've never been to Asia. It's on my list, but my husband has zero desire to do anything Asia. You need a lot of shots, right? Do you need shots to go to Asia? Uh, yeah. Who is it? Morgan. Shah Jahan. On your whiteboard. Uh, what is the religion that Akbar really supports because he thinks it will solve a lot of problems in India? Yeah. Is that wrong? You spelled it wrong. Weird, but it's right. Ethan. Oh. Sikhism. Sikhism. Oh, Sikhism is a blend of what two religions? Good. Javi. Muslim. Islam, but yeah. On your whiteboard, please tell me what is the name of the gentleman who is super religiously tolerant and is a pretty cool guy. Also killed a guy twice. Philip, Akbar, on your whiteboard, please tell me what is the new sect of Islam that believes 11 imams have presented themselves and they are waiting for their 12th, and this is your boy, Aladdin. <laughs> good, Adam, sounds good. On your whiteboard, what is the Japanese term for closing the Japanese ports to Europeans? Good, Johnny. Sounds good to me. On your whiteboard, what is the tax on all non-Muslims in the gunpowder empires? Good. Bobby. On your whiteboard, give me all three gunpowder empires. Oh, God. Good. What are they? Kaiser. There you go. On your whiteboard, please tell me. What is the only gunpowder empire that used Sharia law? No. Good. Bella. There you go. On your whiteboard, please tell me. What is the name of the capital city of Tokyo that is the heart of art and culture? Uh, Nathan. I do. You do. On your whiteboard, please tell me what is uh, what Gunpowder Empire is known for its art and architecture. They had like a little renaissance. Good. Morgan. Mughal. On your whiteboard, please tell me. <laughs> Uh, the Tokugawa are going to cause the decline of what two aspects of Japanese society? One is a warrior, one is the leader. One starts with a D, one starts with an S. What are the two aspects? Josh, you're killing it, man. You're absolutely killing it today. Nice job, man. He's putting all of you to shame. He's the first one up on everyone. Josh, who are they? No, Samurai. Samurai, sorry, I was with you though. Samurai, Samurai and Daimos. Are those the leaders? Yeah. Daimos are, shoguns are going to stay in place because they're like the lords and nobles. They're just going to be super highly supervised now, right? 
How much time do I have? Like you're done. You're ready. There's two minutes. I don't. I don't. You're right. You're done. Oh, Miss Ben. Yes, Miss. In regards for class selections for next year, you suggest. So this is what I'm looking at uh -huh. right now is um doing AP Euro. Yeah. No.